Okay, so let's call our meeting to order for the 25th, 2020. Um, and it'll take me a little bit to get used to this because it's very different being in my own office as opposed to uh, uh, in there with everybody. So I hope everybody's safe and thank you all for joining remotely. Looks like we may have a couple uh, residents on as well. So the first thing to go through is the consent agenda. We have minutes for January 15th of 2020. Uh, I don't think we have any warrants at this time listed. Um, then we are looking for chapter 90, select board approval, administrative and financial policies, select board approval, personnel policies. We're looking for select board approval. Uh, we're looking to appoint a DPW administrative assistant, Jessica Perron. We have a treasurer contract that just is requiring a select board signature. A mass DOT project 607886, Russellville Brook culvert replacement, uh, select board approval to continue that project. And then we have mass DOT project 608089, and we are looking for select board approval of deactivation project to be funded in another DOT project. So. Christian, could I just pull out the, um, I just had a clarifying question on one of the human resource policies. So could we set that aside for a moment? Sure, do we wanna, is it uh, what one, personnel or administrative and financial? Um, it is a personnel policy. It's the, okay. just a telecommuting policy. Okay. Set that one aside. Anything else? Jennifer, are you going to uh, show the board docs on the screen or not? Would you like me to show the board docs on the screen as well? Oh, uh, just this part. There's a few DPW ones that, or, or I can just abstain from the DPW ones. Absolutely. Hold on one moment. So I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Um, with the exception of the items that were pulled out. Anybody there to second? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. Oh boy. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, mm -hmm. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, aye, except for the DPW ones. Okay, then Molly, you had to pull aside the uh, a couple of policies. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Joyce. Okay. Joining us from San Francisco? Yeah, Mountain San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need Joyce's vote on that since John's abstaining? Yeah. What, that what was that? Could, you, could you go back over that for me, please? I'm sorry. I thought we were starting at 630. I don't know where my head is. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, we just did the consent agenda. So it's uh, some minutes from January 15th, uh, chapter 90 approval, administrative and financial policy approvals, uh, personnel policies we're pulling aside, DPW administrative assistant, Jessica Perron appointing her, treasurer contract, we're signing that, and then two mass DOT projects, the Russellville Brook culvert replacement, we're continuing that, and then project 608089. I'm not sure what one that is off the top of my head, and that's to be funded in another DOT project. So that's okay. what you're voting on. Okay. I agree. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, except for the DPW there. And then Molly wanted to pull the personnel policies out. Um, yep, I just had a clarifying question, and, and I may have answered my own question. Um, so I guess this is for, for Ed. Um, yes, ma'am. On the telecommuting policy, under, uh, I think it's eligibility, it, it basically says that um, the employee's direct supervisor can authorize it, and I was actually going to say that maybe we need it to be a little bit more stringent you know so that not everybody you know it doesn't just turn into um 
you know, kind of excessive use of telecommuting. I mean, I think it's important to have the policy. But sure. Um, I think later on, it looks like it does say. Yeah, there has to be an agreement. With the department head and town administrator, they, they have to approve all telecommuting schedules. Yes. Okay. It's just that that section was on a different page and I don't think I saw it the first time, but that's right. Oh, no worries. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, I just want to make sure there was a little bit more control over it, especially if it's something that we're going to be trying out. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions there? Sounds okay. Uh, and I just have a motion to approve the personnel policies. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is, is David joining us at some point? Uh, David, David Films, he's working. He's working. Okay. He might be able to join us later, but he wasn't sure. He said, "Okay, thank you." Uh, we have on our agenda here. It's listed public comments from six thirty to six forty-five. Do we need to wait since that's posted at that, or can we take those now? The rule. Of, the rule is you can. Uh, t all you have to do is provide public notice. Okay. So uh, you can take things in and out of order uh, as you wish. So it's up to the chair. Okay, yeah, we can take some public comments now. I don't know if anyone else on the call is here for public comment or just for other issues. Up, oh, Jennifer, I think you're muted. Are you talking? <laughs> I am sorry. I'm going to unmute the residents so they can make their comments, and then I will re-mute re them as once we move on. So I'm going to unmute the resident now for the comments. Okay, thank you. Hi, resident. Can you please identify yourself and the select board's taking public? You have an uh, open, open uh, line here to make a public comment. They're unmuted. They're unmuted. Okay. Was there anyone else? Uh, I see one other number I don't recognize for sure. Was that person? That's Chris Okafor, I'm pretty sure. Chris? Oh, yeah. Yes, Chris Okafor, yes. yes. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Chris, you're on. Okay. The phone. So, so just to make sure that we're following the letter of the law with respect to open meeting, um, let's give the resident a, a telephone number to call in. He, that person can call my cell phone. My cell phone number is 413-320-6695. If you want to call, I'll relay your comments to the board. Okay, and sorry if you're having technical difficulties and we can't hear what you're saying. Um, okay, so first item of new business is the Rocky Hill Road Heavy Vehicle Exclusion and Traffic Study. Um, I'm sure this was, you know, this was when in the uh, previous uh, time when traffic on Rocky Hill Road was being an issue with all the the traffic and cut through traffic. So I don't know um, where we are right now with that, but we are going to talk to the residents and see if we could do a traffic study on Rocky Hill Road in a couple of spots. I don't know if we want to just delay this for right now or um, look into having a traffic study. It seems like now would be the wrong time given I'm sure traffic's at an all-time low on Rocky Hill Road right now in recent past. Yeah, I'd be afraid that the results would be skewed. Um, it may not be indicative of the reality once we're all through this uh, current crisis. Yeah. So, so the background on this is that a number of uh, residents of Rocky Hill Road have approached the chief of police uh, to complain about the volume of traffic and the types of vehicle that are uh, uh, using Rocky Hill Road as a way to uh, as a way to uh, get from uh, uh, east to west or west to east. 
Uh, we uh, were going to have uh, residents come into tonight's meeting in order to discuss this. Uh, the Doing a bit of research, we found out that the Mass Department of Transportation can impose a heavy exclusion, uh, heavy vehicle exclusion on part or all of the road. Um, in order to get that approval from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, we would have to conduct a traffic study. We are allowed to have two free traffic studies through our membership with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, we suggested that we would set up a traffic study at uh, Rocky Hill Road, as well as the most likely alternate route, Huntington Road. Um, and we all agreed that uh, doing so while the university was in session was a good idea, but now things have changed so substantially that I think we should um, pledge in the future when things settle down and the university opens up that we uh, engage Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to do those two traffic studies, which then can be sent to uh, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation who will make the decision whether to uh, uh, impose the heavy vehicle exclusion and uh, what that exclusion might look like. Uh, there are some details that we should discuss, but again, we should do this at a time when we can bring more of the residents of Rocky Hill Road in uh, with the chief of police and we can talk about some of the details. Um, I did reach out to the town of Amherst to see if they would be interested in having that heavy vehicle exclusion uh, extend into their town since Rocky Hill Road ends at the intersection of Commonwealth Drive and Amity Street. Um, they were not interested, the town of Amherst, for a number of reasons, are not interested in participating in such a uh, joint action. I think that I actually think the uh, traffic on 40 um, Rocky Hill Road um, has been extremely well monitored by our police. Um, they've written many citations on that road now, and I think, uh, especially now with, uh, especially with UMass um, not in session right now, I think it's even better. But when they were in session, um, there were comments from uh, residents about how happy they were with the patrolling and uh, the amount of citations that were being issued. So I'm not exactly sure if we have uh, an issue there. I think. You know, we may want to postpone this until a future date when that people can actually come in and, and talk about it again. But I don't, I'm not exactly sure that we have a problem right now. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we really have a heavy equipment issue. It's the speeding cars from the students and even probably some of the employees from UMass. And I would think once school gets back together that they can, uh, UMass probably will have something to say about it also if Amherst doesn't. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I'm think thinking we, can... we should revisit this in July or some other time when it's closer to, we know when school is, will be back in session and we could set something like this up. How long would it take to get the traffic study going, David? Do you know? Uh, I talked to the PVPC and they said that they would need uh, three to four weeks to set it up. Okay, yeah, so beginning of July, we could have it set up in August or late August, September. But even then we won't be really, hopefully we're gonna be back uh, in some normalcy by the fall uh, and the you know, students are allowed to come back to school, which then will increase the traffic and we'll have, I think, a better idea. The count now is going to be really not anything that we can, you know, um, lay our hands on or actually make any uh, good decisions about. Yes, let's table it. Yeah, we'll table it. Motion to table it. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, so let's go on to our next thing here, funding request for the Board of Health. 
Um, been doing a lot of talk about this in our daily meetings. I know Emma is on the call. Hopefully she's around and didn't get distracted by children, but um, you know, basically we're in a time where there's been a lot of mandates uh, by the state or the Board of Health to carry out certain activities that we haven't really had to do before. And just in talking with Emma and the Board of Health, I've kind of defined four categories I see them being responsible for that they weren't responsible for previously, or we didn't have this kind of function, was uh, it seems like they're spending a lot of time taking phone calls from people that are calling the Board of Health concerned about the coronavirus, and they spend a lot of time answering people's questions and giving them some facts and things like that about the virus. This, I, want to, I want to reiterate something here. This is their job. We have three elected officials there on the Board of Health, and it's not just one person that should be answering those calls. Every one of those should be answering the call. If one's not available, somebody else should be answering it with a sheet in front of them on how to respond to the questions. We all have certain uh, criteria that we follow, and I'm I'm an employee of Cooley Dick just as well as Emma, and we have criteria that we need to follow on a daily basis. And this should be also for the Board of Health. I'm a little bit dismayed by this whole issue here. We have three members that are being paid monthly, which none of us on the Board of Selectmen are right now. And I just want them all to do their job at this point and take the calls. So, so that's one category. Then there's another category of work they have to do that is calling people that are confirmed positive with the test and following up with them to see how they're doing, if they're getting food, if they're basically getting their needs met. Then we've there's- had one, We've had one positive report of coronavirus in Hadley. Joyce, Joyce that's that not true. We've That's had not, one, one reported to us, one. So I'm gonna try and maintain my composure because obviously this is something that Christian, myself, Chief Spanknable, everyone on the Unified Command has been dealing with tirelessly and really be going above and beyond trying to keep our community safe. This is as far we, beyond the as we normal all have. This is far beyond the normal duties of a board of health. This is specialized to public health. This is not reviewing a septic plan. This is a totally different situation with totally different needs that have to be met. And I just want that to really be recognized um, and for everyone to really our community needs right now. Yeah, I think what we're asking of them right now is more than what what is is what they thought they were getting into when they signed up for the Board of Health. I mean, there was um, there was uh, the this, the demand is so much greater than normal right now. I mean, the public health aspect of being on the Board of Health, I feel like, is really, really increased over what would normally be acceptable for, you know, an elected position of that nature. And, you know, we need to give them some assistance because it just the quantity of calls they're getting is so far above normal. And I agree with what Joyce is saying is that that is part of their position, but it's also, it's getting to be extreme, you know, I don't know if it's that extreme. I, I and I'm not going to downplay anything. I exactly know uh, about what is happening in our Hampshire County. I'm very well aware of it. Being working in the system, we're getting daily reports uh, in in where I work. Um, and of course, I have a daughter that works at the hospital that keeps me updated on everything that's going on over there, also. And uh, you know if. I think we all just need to follow uh, 
what we need to follow um, for our precautions and things of that nature, we are not going to be going into anybody's house. Uh, we are supposed to be directing people to call their primary cares. This is a this is a standard thing that um, the protocol that needs to be followed throughout um, the state. And we're following all of the state guidelines and, and, and telling our patients, if you have any signs and symptoms, please call your primary care physician. They will be the ones that will direct them to where and what they need to do. That's what our guidelines are saying. So I'm trying, I'm trying to figure all of this out where um, we're not going to be going into anybody's homes. We shouldn't be. We should not be doing that. That's not our practice, and that's not yeah, what we should Joyce, be doing. and we, we've discussed this, and we're trying to coordinate. I think the difficulty we're having right now is coordinating the Board of Health's bucket and the fire department's bucket, and then how they communicate together. And it seems right now any kind of home a home visit or safety check would be done by the fire department. Correct. Poss That's the way that it you should know, be. Possibly the Absolutely. police department because they do wellness checks. So there's Correct. some crossover there. But yeah. I think it's mainly, it seems to me it's a lot the phone calls of both people calling the Board of Health. I mean, I don't know how many messages there's getting left, but one thing we were thinking of doing today is seeing if we can get the school nurses to fill in at the Board of Health to at least answer basic questions and then... Absolutely, I think that's a great idea. But, but we're trying to see if that is okay with the union. I guess there's some union issues around that'd be a great use of their time to be able to do something, but we don't know what it they would, do right it, now. It would be great if they would step up and do that. I, I, I totally agree with that aspect. There's certainly, certainly they could a answer any medical questions and have those questions and answers in front of them. Um, I think that would be great. So Christian, can I make a couple of suggestions? Yeah. Um, so the first one is you know, and having um, silently listened to the, the call today, I think that was a very good discussion um, about the nature of the burden on our Board of Health and the practical challenges that they're having right now. Um, as you just stated, there are a variety of ideas in terms of getting the school nurses involved, um, possibly reaching out to the university, to the public health yeah. college. Um, but I think at this point, really what we're looking at is uh, a process. And, and it seems to me that that's what needs to be um, developed as quickly as possible. And it makes sense that it would be some sort of a call center process, which is a funneling so that people are calling in, there's a certain volume that can be handled and quite frankly, kind of nipped in the bud immediately for redirection. Yeah. And that will prevent a volume of going through to Emma and the other people on the board. You know, so it's a just again, it's a classic call center funneling process, um, and figuring out how to staff that. So, in, in that regard, it seems to make sense that there already is this unified um, management team in place, and maybe at tomorrow's meeting, somebody could take ownership of figuring out how to implement that cooperatively with all of the players involved as quickly as possible and how to staff it. Um, so that, that's one suggestion, I think. And then the second suggestion is, because we really don't know where all of this is going, um, we talked about declaring a state of emergency uh, previously, and it didn't seem that we were anywhere near at that point needing to do that. But if things do kind of explode quickly, um, it, it would seem that it would be appropriate for Hadley, now that we do have um, cases in town here, to go ahead and make that declaration, if nothing else, then just to facilitate any uh, monetary transfers that might be necessary to fund equipment or other resources. Joyce, if, if I can speak for a minute. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I know Dick is trying to call in um, because he 
also wants to be here. I think he's here. He's that 586 number. I just, I just unmuted him. Great. So I just want to echo that this is not just private physicians or hospitals that are supposed to be giving these community members the directive choice that boards of health through town nurse programs are obligated to contact every result that comes back positive, that we have to contact trace and document that in the, in the MAVEN system, that there is limited access to that MAVEN system, that we are having a lot of challenges as well as being experienced through all of our local health system and also the state um, by small towns as well as large cities that we're really all experiencing the same hardships. And even today, I mean, we just had another suspect case come across in an email even during this meeting. Joyce, I'm, I guess I'm concerned that the information that you're hearing and your level through Cooley Dickinson is not actually reflective of all of the work that we're having to do as the local board of health. Dick, are you able to speak about that as well? Yes, I am. Uh, we've found out in the last couple of days that uh, we don't have support. Like I don't, I don't know what you spoke about before, but we don't have support which we thought we had, or we're going to be able to get through the coalition in Northampton. That's out. Uh, I don't have the experience to to do the Maven stuff. Uh, we're we're just being overwhelmed with phone calls and stuff. I I've been on the phone all day today, and as well as all day yesterday, trying to solve different problems. That not only the Maven, but also uh, store closures, uh, other things that are happening. And it's just uh, we talked today at, the, at noon time about trying to get bodies to help us, but uh, we're at the point now where I I don't know where to go. Even though some of the suggestions sound good, we we're, we're not going to be able to, to handle what, what's happening. Dick, um, before you got on the call, I was just suggesting that in a situation like this, it seems like there needs to be kind of one person um, who's challenged with the uh, organization of coming up with a, a call center process. And I would think that that could happen fairly quickly. Um, but it also seems like that's something that should really be driven, in my opinion, through the emergency management coordinator. Um, you know, I think Mike and Mike have a lot of um, experience in that in that environment in terms of having to deal with other uh, command situations. So maybe on tomorrow's call, um, you know, they might have some ideas on, on how to make that happen so that it will alleviate some of the pressure on you immediately while we try to get appropriate resources in place. You know, I, I guess I'm just going to go on record saying one of my concerns about a previous suggestion, which was to bring somebody on one individual full time, um, you know, and have them working a, a full work week. My concern there is where's the disaster recovery on that? If that individual becomes sick, then we have no backstop. So I think we need to attack this differently um, with multiple resources. And granted, everybody's not going to have the same skill set. So the, that all has to be mapped out. Um, and I think Jennifer just mentioned to me that uh, Chief Spanknable's on the line. So maybe he could jump in here if he's there. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Yeah, um, so I just want to say I understand we're looking at two different things here so we're talking about the responsibility of your public health nurse and public health person with responding so Emma responding to Maven um, so all the the confidential information that has to be reviewed continuously I understand that part I think what we were talking about today um, so our in our unified command meeting tomorrow one of the priorities will be to um, will be to establish or to pass down to someone or a team to get going on having resources put in place so that we can get 
the uh, all the extra information covered and prioritizing that and then running it back up to where it needs to go. So uh, we'll have, you know, it, it doesn't have to be somebody in the office. It can be somebody who has one of our, our emergency management cell phones that they can take with them. Um, we can we can set that up and, and make that happen. And I think I had discussed that initially today as well. So we can we can fast track this and make things happen uh, now that we know that we're, you know, we're obviously, you know, Emma has always stated that we're always going to be a little bit behind on this. So we have to plan ahead. So we'll we'll get going on that um, tomorrow. Well, I think that this is Dick. I think that the main thing that we're really is 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 blowing my mind is, is this Maven stuff. And, it, and it's just uh, um, having looked into it and uh, the follow-ups and all the information that's got to be gathered that's being mandated. And and I I don't know if we'll ever get it all. I just don't know if uh, we'll be able to pull this off. Uh, we're doing the best we can, but it, it's just, uh, I know that both nurses, you know, Marge and Emma were, we're on this stuff all day, As, and I was just trying to pick up the slack here and there, but it's just, uh, uh, you know, they have a command, have a phone line or something designated. That that's fine. That's going to take some of the some of the stuff, but uh, somebody's got to be able to answer the questions that send people in the right direction. And I think that's what we talked about today at lunchtime. But uh, that's that's the smallest part of the deal, I think, right now. I have to. Have, well, have actually, to have, you know. Where I think all the like the town clerk is getting the same number of calls asking questions, so that's why I think we need to have one centralized point of uh, for COVID response. And I understand that um, there's probably the potential of needing additional assistance, but I think all of our departments are getting inundated with these these questions. I know I'm on the phone like nonstop getting calls and just trying to do normal business for the day is getting really difficult. So I completely understand that, and I think we, in the unified command team, can we can take a large percentage of that off. I understand we're going to have to get resources for um, getting on Maven and figuring figuring how how to to manage that as well. But I think having somebody answer the calls and actually prioritize them, um, you know, you know, I'm I'm getting calls that I can't answer right away, and while it might be an extremely important message that I need to get back to to still still have to prioritize it. And I think that's what that, that system would do. That's Joyce, I think you're muted, Joyce. That's, that's not unusual, is it? No. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm not I'm muted. I'm not muted. You'd like to <laughs> mute me, but I'm not. You'd like to mute me, but I'm not muted. So. Um, <laughs> But I, I totally agree with Mike, um, him being the emergency management person in, in directing this uh, operations. I think we all need to heed what he says. And I think that if we had a sheet of uh, responses, and which are typical questions that people are asking, if we could pass them out to people that will be answering a phone, even though we're saying, yes, direct your responses to the Board of Health, if in any way that we can have this out to certain people that would get the phone calls like Jennifer or Jessica uh, or anybody in town hall, um, I think that would certainly help some of the load because a lot of people are just not knowing what to do. And as I said before, there's not really uh, anybody calling in. If you have any signs or symptoms, please contact your primary care. This is the most important thing that you can do to help yourself and get the right care and process that's going on. This is where we're directing everybody to do that. And, you know, I'm, I'm not downplaying all of the calls you got, you're, you're getting. I certainly understand that. I am getting multiple calls in the orthopedic office. So that doesn't even downplay of what I'm sure one-tenth of what you're getting and I, I understand very well but could we please maybe get a, a, a cheat sheet out there for people that might be answering the calls and at least having some everybody being on the same page with their responses could that possibly happen 
I think we're working on that. It's just, we're trying to figure out the process right now. We don't have a process. So I think we need to figure that out. And I think that's a good suggestion. We were talking about this exact thing today at, at the lunchtime call, because, you know, when a dispatcher gets a 911 call, they have certain cards they go to for whatever the situation is. That's the response to that type of call. And we were thinking of doing something similar for this purpose, but. I mean, I we're basically telling people to, to stay home, take their temperature. If you have a cough and a cold, don't go anywhere. Don't go to your primary care. Don't go to the emergency room. If you're having difficulty breathing, that's totally different. Please do call 911. Those are the information, things that we're getting out to people. And maybe that's something that we can institute with our our uh, dispatchers and people that answer these calls on a daily basis, if that would help at all. Joyce, I do yeah, think what you're saying is important. However, I think you're also missing, there is a huge delay that we're having. One in the ability for people to access testing. So that way information is even crossing over into Maven. Um, and then the second challenge that we're having is we not being able to trace any of those people that you're talking about that are reaching out to their primaries and staying at home because we're supposed to do contact tracing on them. So we have an awareness of the level of activity going on in our community. And we're not able to do that unless people are actively reaching out to the town nurses. So that way that information can be loaded into Maven so we can monitor them appropriately for the follow-up. But that's not that's not the message, Emma, that we're giving out to people about whether it's Maven or not. The proper thing to do is to reach out to the primary care if but they Joyce, would like. Yeah, I'm also talking about. I, I understand that that's the piece that you're talking about. That yeah. part about the primary care piece of that and the what the general script is. But I'm also talking about our legal mandates that we the unfunded mandates and obligations of local boards of health within the state of Massachusetts for follow-up. But you're yeah, not going I to think the fundamental problem here is we have an unfunded mandate by the state that is not in our budget because we've never been confronted with this kind of public health crisis before. But your, but, your but your hospital and your local doctor's offices are not mandated by the board of health to report any of these if that's not part of their practice. So their practice is to treat, to send the patient if they're showing other signs and symptoms, to tell them to get further care, and then the Board of Health would be reported or whatever. The, the person that was, was in our town that tested positive, he didn't go to anybody. He went to Bay State Franklin in, North, in Greenfield and then was transferred to, to Bay State. So that wouldn't have even hit us in this area at all for us to even have known that if the patient hadn't called us and told us that this was happening to him. So there's other, uh, you know, people aren't just using local uh, people here. They're outsourcing. They're going outside of our county even to get care. And we're not aware of those things. So it's very hard to track those patients. So can we just go go back to, I mean, again, it's, it's a select board meeting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I, I think I think the Board of Health has presented a problem. Um, I think Christian outlined it. They're, they've made it very clear the fact that they're getting overwhelmed um, and that begs a process. And Mike said, yeah, right now there is no um, hotline, so to speak, in place or a funneling process or a call center, whatever you want to call it. And like Joyce said, having a, a quick fact sheet to make sure people do what they should be doing next. Um, and much like the social distancing with the idea of being to try to smooth out the um, curve, I think that's what we need to get in front of right now and come up with a process as quickly as possible. Personally, I think that uh, Mike Spanknable's team is uh, equipped to do that. And it probably mm -hmm. will need to be tweaked along the way. But I think if people cooperate, it can be done fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, I just want to say I'm supporting that that's the next step. Um, and I don't think that we have enough information to 
be allocating specific amounts of money for anything yet, but I do think we need to be nimble and be prepared if the time arises, whether it's for public safety, for Board of Health or whomever. And to that end, I think Christian had suggested a week ago that we should be looking to declare a state of emergency specifically so that it will facilitate that funding. So I think, I mean, I'm happy to do that tonight if that's what other people want to agree to. Yeah, I mean, I thank you, Molly, for getting us on track. And uh, yeah, I, that's the point of this basically is the state of emergency in order to fund anything related to this aspect. This is where the state of emergency comes in. We're just not going to have time to uh, get money elsewhere. So we're going to have to declare the state of emergency to get money, money for this particular task. Because I think even if we come up with this structure, there are going to be costs associated with it that we don't have allocated in our budget right now. So I don't know if we want to declare that state of emergency now or give me the authority to do it in um you know the next week when it will likely come up but um, I, I i just say at this point you know uh i'll make a motion to declare a state of emergency at this point uh just in case we need any extra funding i'll second that yeah i'll second that yeah okay. all right any any further discussion on that Mr. Chairman, this is your emergency management director. Oh, yes, go ahead. Yes. I, I agree with you 100% on initiating this at this point. Um, I think we're at the point now where things are moving quickly. So like I said two weeks ago when you were asked about this, there's no negative impact to this. It's just we just wanted to make sure folks understood that this allows us to free up the entire town's budget in order to you know, if we need to access funding. So we haven't had, we haven't had to do that at this point, but it will allow us to do that if, if it's necessary. Sounds good. So, yeah. so this is your town administrator talking and I agree. Uh, I think that it's, it's high time that we declare a state of emergency for the purposes of being able to uh, devote maximum resources to the, the greatest good for the uh, for the health of the uh, community, so uh, here, here. Okay. Well, I have the paperwork right over here somewhere, so I'll sign that after the meeting and then send that There's off. There's been to... a motion. Oh and yeah. A second. <laughs> Thank you, Joyce. <laughs> I told you it's going to take me getting used to this meeting structure. Okay. All all those in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. So as I was saying, I can sign this. I'll send it over to David and. Uh, the fire chief uh, after the meeting. Thank you all. Thank you. And and just, you know, kind of to wrap it up then. So in terms of establishing a process. <coughs> I'm sorry, can you repeat what you said there, Molly? It just broke oh, up. A little bit. Just coughing. <laughs> um, in terms of establishing a, a process to provide assistance to the Board of Health, um, that process can be dis uh, discussed in um, the emergency meeting tomorrow. Yeah, yes. that will be on our agenda tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Along, along with what you said, Molly, the uh, school nurse maybe in uh, the infirmary of UMass. Mm -hmm. Or the yeah. public health or the public health department at UMass. Yeah. 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 Molly has contacts there and has offered to reach out. So we're working on that angle. We're working on the school nurse angles. We're just trying to put it all together and see what we can do. Chief, did you have something to say? Uh, no, we're, I completely agree. Like I said, we'll assign the specific task to somebody and we can, um, obviously we'll take information from whoever, but we'll assign it to someone like we did for the Council on Aging Meals program that we're doing so we'll, we'll make it happen great. um you passed would, us so now we're, we're good would emma or somebody be willing emma are you there yeah i'm here um would you be willing to do a, a like a cheat sheet for people that uh are able to answer the phone whether it be jessica or the dispatchers or somebody so that if uh, somebody calls in, they would be able to give the right answer. Would that be okay with you? 
So I wish I had the time to do that, but I'm so bogged down with the case management for all these contacts that we keep getting inundated with. Okay. I did reach out to other towns to see if they already had a tool. I forwarded uh -huh. what was sent to me from the town of Amherst, from Julie there, from their health department to Chief Stank Naval earlier. Okay. Um, but unfortunately, it just had the questions, no answers yet. So it seems like everyone and all levels is really working the best that they can right now to try and make those tools. Okay, so Chiefs Bank Enable, do you think that somebody could uh, put that together to have a cheat sheet? We will we'll be assigning this task tomorrow uh, and we'll make sure that uh, like we do every day as part of our unified command message, we'll make sure everybody has an opportunity to, to check it out. So we're We'll we'll definitely make it happen. We'll find the resource, and if I can, uh, we'll, if, we'll, if, we'll I get can it done. if I can find one, also I will um, fax it to you. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank uh, you. We'll, we'll be figuring out tomorrow who it's going to be assigned to, and we'll let everybody know where it needs to go. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, just to end that, I really want to thank the Board of Health and the Fire Chief here for all the work they've been doing on this. And, you know, it's completely unchartered territory and a new process for us all. So just want to thank you for your work on this. I, I thank everybody also. In 52 years of nursing, I have never come across anything like we are um, experiencing right now. And I, I do thank everybody for keeping level headed and doing what we need to do for our community. All right, our next topic here is the public health planning. Um, so it's kind of what we talked about. Um, okay, yeah, we already, we kind of went over these policies. The select board is asked to adopt telecommuting policy. I believe we did that the sick bank policy and the staggered shift policy. I don't know if that one, these were all included in that, uh, the consent agenda. Oh, David. okay. Correct. These were all there, correct? Correct. I well, saw, I don't know, what do you think? Is David <laughs> muted? I hear him. Hello, David. Hello, here I'm, here I'm again. Okay, so I don't think we did the, uh, <laughs> leave bank. I thought My we computer. did that at the. I thought we did that at the last meeting. We approved the sick bank. Uh, I'd say no. Negative. No. Approve it again. A uh, yeah. motion to accept the sick bank. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on the sick bank? I'll donate two hundred hours. Oh, thank, well, thank you, you, David. You're a gem. Any other discussion on that? Um, I'm having a, I don't see the flex schedule. Where did you say there was a flex schedule, Christian? I'm sorry. Uh, staggered shift policy. It is in the text, but I do not see that in the. Oh, I, you know, I think that was a placeholder, but we didn't officially develop anything. Okay. So we're just voting on the sick bank policy anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, sick bank, FMLA, tele, so in total, Sick bank, FMLA, telecommuting, and fraternization. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Do you want a second on that? No. Second. All right. Thank you. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And uh, just want to. Is John there? Did he say aye? Yes. Aye. Aye. Oh. Thank you, John. Thank you, Joyce, for. Um, yeah, just to um, note everybody too. I hit the mute button by mistake here. Oh, Jesus. It's my first day with the new computer, so. <laughs> yeah. The town does have a daily um, unified command response and COVID-19 response uh, on the website. And actually, if you just go to HadleyMA.org, there's a link right there where you can click on it and it'll take you to the daily update. Thank you. Anything else you want to say on that? We yep. also we also are getting updates from uh, water and wastewater out down at DPW. I don't know if Chris would let you guys know about that or not, but those organizations are doing a little bit over and above to notify all the operators of what's going on. Good. That's great. Thank you, John. Yeah. 
Is it helpful? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of good information coming through every day. Uh, there's more on the water side than the wastewater side, but they're coming around. Okay. Who's calling? Uh, David Nixon just texted me. He was having trouble with his connection. So I'm going to just put him on uh, speakerphone here real quick. <laughs> See how this works. He's back up, it looks like. Is he back on? I see him. He's probably it'll probably take a minute for his volume to kick in. And Chris Okrafer, I have unmuted you if you have any comments. At this point, no, I don't have comment at this point. Yeah. Oh wait, hold on one second. David had something here. Hold on. No, I'm just letting you know that I haven't been able to hear the last five minutes of the uh, the meeting. So I'm calling you, Christian, so that I could be participating at least by cell phone. Okay. Can everybody hear that? We yeah. can. Okay. Um, yeah, so just to, we were just any other, we approved all the sick bank policy, telecommuting policy, FMLA policy. Um, was there anything else on the COVID-19 or any of those policies you wanted to say, David, before we go? Yeah, to one, one thing that we should do to make sure that the, the viewing audience knows that this is a resource is that we should be directing everybody to www.hadleyma.org where we have a daily update page on COVID-19. It's got resources, information, links to other um, agencies, state, local, federal, uh, and uh, that should be the place where people get a lot of their, um, um, their information. Uh, it's easy to access, it's free, uh, and uh, it uh, frees up phone lines. Okay. Thank you. Well, we can talk about that tomorrow. Okay. Um, is anybody on from the Senior Center Library and Fire Substation? I'll just kind of go in order here real quick. Uh, is anybody I on? I don't have any updates on the fire station, but I took a ride by there. They're moving right along. It looks, looks great. I think we're good. we're on schedule and um, we're looking to open up this summer. So uh, I haven't heard anything different from Phil or, or Mike on that. Did you Mike, is Mike on still? Oh, he'll come on if he needs to. But I don't have any other updates on that except we're still moving along. We're supposed to be having a finance meeting um, the beginning of April or already into April. Imagine that. Um, so the first week of April, we will have a meeting. Uh, maybe we'll be doing it like Zoom like we are right now, but we'll have one for finance and any other updates at that point. Okay. And then on the senior center, I know we need to vote on something I believe we already voted on is an N star or uh, I guess we ever source easement uh, in order to get power to the senior center. Uh, somehow this was not signed or filed at the time that we had made this note, which was a while ago. Um, so we just need to vote on approving this tonight, signing it, it, get it done. Yeah, wasn't that the line they ran from Route Nine when the what there was before the paving from through the uh, uh, through Legion the, Park? Legion lot. parking lot. Yeah. yeah, it's already yeah. done. We have the easement with the Legion. We voted on all this and went through. It just seems like there was a uh, uh, you know we just did not do the yeah, final would, filing. David might you, know. If you, would, if you would sign it, then I can get it recorded. Okay, we just need to get it recorded. Um, right, motion but, to approve. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, but on that, the senior center is looking really good. I mean, it's going to like final finishes and final painting and floors, ceilings, pool tables, all kinds of stuff is going in there right now. Whoa, so really, uh, we're going to go play pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's getting close to the the uh, the end of the project. I mean, they're moving right along and things like the easement and different things are just holding them up a little bit. Of course, we do have issues right now because of uh, COVID-19, why we're all in this meeting right now is because Eversource isn't booking uh, 
uh, site appointments right now. So we're trying to troubleshoot that and different things. So if, if, if uh, the world was normal, we'd be in much better shape, but it's uh, a challenge just getting it all done with the world we're, we're faced with today, but, but it's good. Yep. We're moving that. along and that's the main thing on all these projects. So yeah, yeah, good. they're still working, so it's good. Good. I have a quick update on the, the senior center. Our, uh, our lease agreement with the, the diocese expires on April 1st, 2020. I've reached out to the diocese and we've uh, negotiated a, an, an extension for at least 30 days. Okay, that's great. yeah, thank you, David. Do you need a motion on that, David, or not? Uh, yeah, that would be great. The lease for the senior center at the Holy Redeemer Parish Hall until for a month. Sure, again. No change in price. Okay, just a month to month. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. It's called tenancy at will. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I used to be a landlord. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Molly, how's the light? I mean, I see the library. It's, it's. Yeah, yeah. So. Libraries moving along. Um, I double checked uh, in the past couple of days in case there were any change orders that were in the works. Um, there are none at, at this point. Uh, emphasis continues to be on fundraising, but um, in terms of the site itself, um, they're still they're still working. So you can see that when you drive by. So no no uh, changes to report. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, moving on, our next item here is the building inspector search update. Um, basically, uh, we have had uh, kind of gotten our interview process down to two candidates, and we were also going to uh, repost the job to see if any other candidates were available. I don't know, Ed, do you have any updates on uh, people applying for the position still or kind of a status of where we're at from your end? I don't think we ever got to the point where we decided we were going to do that. Okay, okay. Um, so I know there was a lot of conversations. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of items were discussed in that executive session. Uh, I think our fraternization policy will relieve a lot of those items. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with that said, um, you know, it does leave a couple of concerns, but I think, um, you know, that resolves a, a bulk of the issues. And so where some of the committee members were leaning toward one and others weren't quite able to make a decision because there were some factors to take into consideration, um, you know, I, I, I don't know, I can't say for certain, uh, since the names aren't on the table. Um, I do have a recommended course of action that I did discuss with a couple of the board members. Um, I don't know if that's palatable for, for you or not, um, but I think we, I, we do have a reasonable solution. Um, I'm not sure if I can tell you in open meeting or not, though, that's the only thing. If you want me to tell you, I'll tell you. If you'd rather repost and revisit, that's okay too. Well, Ed, Ed can I jump in and... Um with a point to ponder for open meeting and then then we can figure out uh yeah you know, i think i think my only um consternation at this point is there was only one interview um and then the one interview wasn't even with the full complement of the committee that we set up so i'd like to suggest at this point that um we have a second round of interviews with the two candidates that were um the most favorable out of that process. And uh, I think that should just be with the full select board at this point. Um, you know, I mean, I'm thinking about the import of the position mm -hmm. and, you know, a, a couple of us were talking, I mean, you know, even going back to working at Stop and Shop when I was a kid, you know, you went through two or three rounds of interviews before you got hired. Sure. Um, and I just feel uncomfortable only having one round or so whether that's with the committee again, but um, again, I think it's a really important position for the town and it would be important for the select board to have 
um, you know, a strong, a strong sense on one candidate or the other. Sure. So I just like to toss that out. Yeah, I think where the committee was divided and a committee member did have to excuse themselves for a legitimate emergency. Um, the second round, you know, being done at the select board level might be the most appropriate. Um, it's just also for transparency, you know, both candidates understand that COVID-19 has dragged this out a little bit longer than we would have liked. Um, and they both seem to understand that. So, um, you know, if the board's open to that, I'm, I'm sure each candidate um, would be more than willing to adjust their schedule. Does yeah. this uh, new policy that we put into place, which I understand totally, we have maybe a same kind of policy where I work about um, what you what you tried to get across at our last meeting. Um, and I know that that's where this policy originated from because we had so many um, questions and answers that we didn't know which way to go. And I, I understand and I thank you for, you know, bringing the policy forward and how we would deliver it. I think uh, that would be questions that we would need to probably do an executive session is what I would like to do. Um, maybe at our next meeting, we could do that. Yeah, I think the interview itself, Joyce, would have to be in a public meeting. Yes, um, I, for the, for the first can... ones, they would be. Yeah. No. Yeah, so I mean, I, too, I'm, you know, given our situation with COVID-19 and, I, you know, just uncertainty around that, I don't want to push it this out for too long because, you know, I feel like we do, Tim's uh, retiring uh, also is, you know, out on, is, is out right now as well. So, um, you know, filling that position, I feel like is pretty critical right now. So. I, I don't want to wait too, too long and don't know how we can make this process quicker, you know? Well, so when our next meeting is what, the first week of April, Christian? April 1. April 1st. Oh, yeah. what a fool's day we have. So yeah, <laughs> next week, I guess, right? <laughs> next yeah. week? Next no, week. The week. Next week. Yeah, it's next week is April 1st already. Yeah, wow. So I'd like um, to that we ask it to um, come up with a process to move the two candidates forward to the final interview with the select board. Okay. Uh, well, I wait. <laughs> Somebody else want to second that? I'll second that. Any further discussion? Well, I'm ready to point one right now. Well, I think due process, uh, probably, John, we will just go through the interview process like we would normally do for any other candidate and just go from there then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Aye. It seems like Tim Nyhart's trying to communicate with us, but he's, I think that his uh, phone is not working. Um. He's already been retired. He can't use his phone from the town. <laughs> you want me to add him in on speakerphone? I could do that. He's, he's laughing or he is listening. Tim has my cell phone number. If he wants to call me right now, I can connect him. Mr. Nyhart. I could call him in too. You have David on your phone, right? I could add him to my call with David. Nobody he has my, it. Tim has my phone number. I'm assuming okay. that he'll just call right now. Thank um, Christ you all guys are doing this because I'm I'm clueless. <laughs> I do have a question though. So we're gonna have to come up with a, a set of questions that you know we can kind of rank each candidate again against um, you know, as it stands now, you know, uh, for the general line of questioning, we stuck to some building inspector competencies, um, you know, openness and communication to the public in terms of experience, you know, each candidate is a qualified, qualified building experience. Uh, building inspector. Um, they've had their certifications for about the same amount of time and a similar amount of professional experience prior to becoming a building inspector. Um, so their professional competencies, or I should say technical competencies, have certainly been established. Um, what line of questioning would you like me to line up uh, moving forward? Would you like, you know, questions around management style, budgeting, um, knowledge of open meeting law, 
of interest? Where would you like that line of questioning to go? Ed, maybe, um, you know, we've, we've done a number of other interviews with multiple rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe you could leverage some of the questions that came up in those interviews and, and tailor them to the job. The other thing would be, um, we've asked all of the other key department head positions that we hired. Um, we gave them a task um, to leave the room and do on a computer and then come back. Um, nothing very weighty, but again, just you know, establishing comfort level with the computer and kind of thinking on the fly, formulating cohesive thoughts on the fly, that type of thing. Okay. Hi there. Um, so Tim is now on my phone and he's connected. So he just has a comment. Tim, you can go ahead. Um, just the comment that I have is that uh, we are still getting some and we need to get them expedited as soon as possible. And one of my main concerns is to get somebody that you know who I want. And the reason is that person can jump in and run with everything that we have right now. We really, we're in a real serious bind here, trying to get this um, transition happening. And like you all said, the, the, the um, virus has really put a damper on this, but we really need to make sure that whoever we pick, and you know who I want, and can jump in do everything quickly. Um, I know your concerns, but in my opinion, those concerns are small compared to dealing with the projects that we have and we will be having um, constantly. So, um, yes, as soon as you guys get this thing going and finalize it, the better off we're going to be because there's a lot of projects there that are uh, sitting and waiting right now. Okay, thank you, Tim. Thank you. Jennifer? Yes, I'm here. Could you, uh, Ed, would it be all right if Jen uh, texts me your phone number so I could talk with you? Of course. Okay, thank you. I don't have your phone number, but I'd like to give you a call at some point tomorrow. Would that be okay? I'm here at your disposal. You are so good. Thank you. It's I'll text it nice to you smile. after the meeting. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. Christian? I'm muted. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's, let's schedule that for next week, and we'll move forward on that path and hopefully make a decision as soon as we can. Okay, sounds good. Um, Next would be town administrator recruitment. Uh, we are just asked to review and approve the job posting for the new town administrator. Um, and they want us to call in uh, Christian to the uh, company that's doing the uh, search. What was that? I'm sorry. They want us to call into the company to, that's doing the search. From what I read on on the line on the um, yeah, I think board Jen doc. Jennifer or David were coordinating that to schedule times, and then we were all going to schedule a time to talk to them. Okay. I don't so know. Do I do I, do I yeah. coordinate that through um, David, Jen, or do I just call the company? Here, David has the company to say directly. Oh, David has something to say here. Hold on. Yeah, so so uh, we're working with Buzz. We're working with Buzz Stepinski uh, uh, with MRI on this recruitment, and he would like to have about 45 minutes of your time, each of you, one uh, singly, in order to talk about uh, what your expectations are, what you're looking for in a new town administrator, what's kind of been the history for the past 15 years, questions like that. That will give him a better sense of how uh, to recruit for this position. Um, we were trying to set up uh, appointments, uh, then COVID-19 hit and uh, things became very busy very quickly, but I'd like us to get back on, on schedule. So 
how do you want to do this? Do you want me to set up uh, schedules for interviews or do you want to just reach out and do your own scheduling? I would prefer myself to reach out and do my scheduling if I could, because uh, I still have a job, I guess, at this point. So I guess I will call them to do my scheduling. Yeah, I'm fine calling them directly. Okay, you have the telephone number. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Okay, yeah, I thought I might have uh, scheduled a time, but I don't know for sure if that got confirmed. So I'll, I'll double check. And I can promise you it didn't get confirmed. Okay, okay, I can check that then. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Um, okay, um, how about the, the, the advertisement though? What do you guys think of that? I lost it here. Have we put it out or are they going to do that? Is that what we've hired them for, wasn't it? To do advertising or are we doing our own advertising? Right, they're going to do they're going to do the advertising, but they just want to make sure that the wording is uh, the way that you like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks um, good to me. I thought it was fine. Yeah, I'm just going to pull it up again. Yeah. Well, I thought it was okay too. It certainly puts Hadley in a very good light. Yeah. Are you suggesting any? If we can maintain the schedule, then we will be uh, uh, installing the new town administrator sometime around mid August. It's a little later than we had hoped for, but uh, uh, that person will take over as town administrator. I will take a supporting role and advise as needed. Uh, but that person will be the go to person come August 15th or thereabouts. Sounds uh, fine. Yeah. The interview of the three finalists is June 16th. That's a Tuesday. If you could save that date. Save the date. It's like saving what, a wedding. What day was it again? Uh, June, June 15th. June 16th. Tuesday, June 16th. Sounds good. Um, in the letter, the salary range is blank. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, in the letter, it says salary range to blank dollars is commensurate with qualifications. Yeah, so, so I, I told him to run with the number of 90,000, which is the amount that we have in the budget. Okay. okay, I see. So 90 gets dropped in. I wasn't sure if we were striking it and it was just saying it was commensurate with qualifications with no number, but we're going to use 90. Is that is that the norm, uh, Molly? That you feel? Um, well, I don't know. We haven't really talked about it. So, um, David's saying that's what went into the budget. I mean, it it doesn't seem um, outrageous to me, given the fact that you know we may get people who are inexperienced, people with experience. Mm -hmm. I know. I would think a range uh, with experience and. Uh, how about 90,000? Education. Start with it with negotiable. <clears throat> what does that sound? 90,000 negotiable? Yeah, I talked that over with Buzz. Um, uh, 90 is about in the middle of the range for the valley. Ed had suggested 95 to 110. Uh, I think the Mike Sullivan down in South Hadley is making 125. Paul Bockelman is making north of 140. Um, Steve um, Steve Ellis up in Montague is making 110. Uh, the person in uh, Andre Lamas up in Northfield is making 70. So it's kind of like in the middle of the range. Yeah, and all the, most of the people that you just articulated are experienced. And, and well along the way. So in the spirit of the um, salary study that we just did, right, we really want to have a grade range and have the opportunity for them to move up. So I wouldn't want to go any, you know, set any expectation of anything higher than 90 at this point, and we'll just deal with it when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that, Ed? Well, you're, have you looked into any of this? Um, you know, I, I kind of compare it to like Tim, you know, um, 
when it, when it comes to human assets, salary is far more scrutinized. When it comes to capital assets, the cost is often just sometimes looked at the cost. And um, you know, uh, you know, I, I I don't. I'm not fully. Will there be somebody that will be fine with the 90? Absolutely. But I also think there are going to be some truly experienced experienced candidates that. Um, won't even shake a stick at the advertisement um, for 90. So I think mm -hmm. a range of 90 to 110 is appropriate. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, um, at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're the uh, executive body. If you feel 90 and then negotiable, depending on qualifications is the direction you want to go, um, we'll make sure we affirm that with the um, recruiting company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long no, as we have flexibility. No, go ahead, Molly. I say, as long as we have flexibility, I think. I do too. I like I like flexibility because you don't know uh, what their expertise might be or what they're bringing. So, and I think it's always good to have a range. Uh, and if we can always start them out at lower and then do the increments of, you know, six months or whatever you need to do the, uh, I don't know, we probably should do a 90 day type of, uh, hiring as we do for other employees? Um, most uh, probationary periods are six months for the town. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. I'm gonna unmute Bill Dwyer. I believe he wants to speak. Who's that? Bill Dwyer. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Bill. Um, couple of comments on the draft proposal. We do not have a AAA Bob rating. I saw that. <laughs> and the rest of that sentence is grammatically garbage. Mm -hmm. So I. I <laughs> oh. Um, it, it, this needs some serious proofreading before it gets any further. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> you zoomed in, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Well, I am. Uh, I, I'm trying this out because. We have a meeting coming up in uh, two weeks, and mm -hmm. I need to get some experience on what works and what doesn't work. So, yeah. thank you for uh, inviting me to the party. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Looking good, Bill. Seems <laughs> pre seems pretty easy. Yeah. Hi, Tim Nyhart. Apparently, also would like to speak. I've unmuted him. Tim, can you speak? Tim, if you can't speak, if you call me back, I'll put you back on my phone. Speak, Tim. Speak. I think there might be a problem with his speaker that he's not turning on. Uh -huh. His microphone and speaker. I'm amazed I'm on. Never mind him. <laughs> <laughs> not only are you on, but you're at the Golden Gate Bridge, and that's something. I, know. I love it. I love San Francisco when I was out there. <laughs> So, Ed, are you suggesting then we put in a dollar range 90 to 110? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Then I'll, I'll recommend that we do that. Okay, second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 No. Anything else in regard to the town administrator recruiting? Well, can I just ask John, because he didn't say anything before we... Um, <laughs> What would you rather? I I think that ninety, as long as it's flexible, like you said, is is a fair place to start. Depending on experience and education, you've done it for the DPW, you've done it for highway, you've done it for um, police and fire. Mm -hmm. I think John would. I think John with the ninety to one hundred and ten, you might get uh, a little better pool of candidates. You're not saying that you have to give them 110, but you might have more people that might might apply for the job. So you can start at 90, giving their experience and whatever, and then you can have that opportunity to negotiate at that point. Yeah, we're not obligating ourselves to anything higher than 90. I can say MRI did indicate that they get a better pool of candidates when there's a set range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think it throws it out there that we're negotiable, uh, a town that would look at things in your experience. Yeah, I like the range. I think okay, we already voted on it. So, okay. 
Uh, next agenda item is the DPW director contract and compensatory, compensatory time. Sorry, not, not saying that word. Compensatory. Uh, I'm even good on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, okay. David has a comment. Hold on one second. David has a comment here. All right. So Go ahead, because David. we didn't uh, have a uh, provision for going into executive session at the time that we posted this um, through the Zoom participatory platform, uh, we won't be talking about his contract. Jennifer, as usual, has uh, worked magic and has developed a way for us to go into executive session, but that's not for tonight. We'll okay. set that. Uh, but the issue of the compensatory uh, hours, I thought we had uh, voted on this last time. I thought we, I thought we'd done that also. We did, but there was a slight oversight. Um, we didn't vote on the the well. The, the sick time stays. That's that that transfers regardless. Um, but the they, the select board didn't vote on the vacation time, and I think Chris has a couple of other items that. Um, I don't know if they were forgotten about or came up since, but there are a couple of other items he would like to discuss with you um, in executive session. Um, I was also approached by Scott. Um, some of the other, um, not department heads, but senior managers have a memorandum of agreement. And Scott would also like to engage the select board in having some type of uh, arrangement similar to the other senior managers like um, Lieutenant Cook or the dispatch supervisor. Um, there's a yeah, that'll ha that'll definitely have to go into executive session. Yeah, sure. sure. <clears throat> Next time. Oh, Chris was there. Did he drop off? I don't know if he. No, was no, I'm see I'm here. I'm here. Okay. The the um the one that I think the board can take up tonight is what the, the compulsory. Uh, schedule. Uh, when the board voted last time, the board voted and approved the schedule, but um, personnel feels that the board not specifically mentioned the vacation time. The board mentioned the compensatory time and also that of uh, Scott McCarthy. The board also did not uh, make that uh, pronouncement. So in terms of my other aspect of my contract, uh, I will be discussing that with the board on executive session. But in terms of the time that we are asking the board to grant us waiver, uh, we can do that tonight. Uh, I know the board has given us till December to use up our time at the last uh, meeting. Correct. That was correct. Yes. Okay, so do we want to make a motion for the vacation and comp time? Is that what it would be? I'll make a motion to accept the vacation and comp time and the provision that they use uh, a good portion of that or most of it up by December. Yes. Oh, second. Sorry. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. And uh, just I do, but I do agree with it. <laughs> okay, thank you, John. <laughs> yeah. Do we have any other items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Yeah, yes, we have a couple of things. David has some things here. Um, if Linda Sanderson is listening, she has an announcement about the ban. Oh, yeah. I'll unmute. I'll unmute Linda now. Oh, it's Bill. I'll go under Bill. They're together. Trust me. <laughs> That's a good thing to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is crazy. Okay, I just uh, I wondered if David was going to announce, but now he said that I'm here. Um, yeah. Yes, we did get our proceeds today. You know, this has been a very precarious two weeks because we were right in the middle of getting our three million dollar ban. Um, going to go to your last select board meeting, which we had to cancel, or you had to cancel, but we did get those signatures ahead. And we were able to do all the other follow-up by, um, by uh, scanning, signing, emailing back, and uh, you know, Jessica met with each of you to get your signatures on things that we needed, so that was very helpful. And 
Um, I was on the phone with David Eisenthal saying, are we going to get this money? Is it going to come in? Are the banks, are they there? Are they working remotely? So it was a little bit, um, it was a little bit anxious about it, but I want you to know the proceeds came in today. We have our $3 million from the ban from, uh, that you approved earlier. And I guess it's time for us to start working on the next one and, and see how these building projects are going and what need, what money we're going to need, um, in the next couple of months, but we're good. Can, for you, all can, good. You, can you share with the public, Linda, what our, um, uh, what our percentage would be? Um, our interest rate was uh, 0.93%, as in less than 1%, 0.93%. Great. 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 The band is with TD Bank. Thank you so much. That's mm -hmm. great job. Thank you so much. And here we've got that, and this band is going to go until November. And as is the next one, we'll have to get one more to finish up the buildings. Uh -huh. um, and they're both going to go until November and at which point we roll it into the bond. Um, we're gonna do the bond a little, a couple months earlier than we'd originally intended um, because um, we want, to, because David will still be here. And it's very, it's, it's, it'll be very helpful to have the same parties involved to see this, this through to, yeah. um, to our final bond. So I think that's gonna work out very well. That's so, been a, so far so good. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been great. I, you know, with the percentages going down like they have been to get us on board, it's wonderful. I don't know what to expect for. I think May, end of May, is when we're going to do the uh, next installment. Uh -huh. um, well, I'll be checking in the, with the buildings between now and then to make sure they're on schedule. We might end up borrowing a little bit less if this whole, you know, if, if between the weather and COVID-19, if, if any of the uh, construction is delayed, we might end up borrowing a little bit less, at least a little bit less by June 30th. Um, and then maybe we'll do a second one later in the summer. We'll see, we'll see, but we have time to work that out and uh, do what's best for the buildings and for the town. And, and um, we'll save on interest where we can because- yeah. You know, we need we need the savings and interest to balance out the other costs to us from our, our new situation. Yeah. 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 If you look at our debt inventory, it's um, and I didn't think I'd ever be asking this question right now, but is there any opportunity to refinance anything? You know, I haven't taken that step, but why don't I, I will talk I will talk with David Eisenthal about it. he's working remotely from his home as well. Yeah. Um, talking with people who work remotely is, as you all know, a new experience because you've got kids and dogs and things in the background. It's a, it's a very, very different. So it, it's been interesting, but uh, it's also been, um, we, we've, we've still gotten all the business done that we needed to get done. So that's good. I will give him a call now that we know that we've gotten through our ban mm -hmm. and, uh, we will talk about that. It's a good, it's a good possibility, Molly, about whether we would, especially if we're going to be coming up on a new ban, whether we want to refinance something into it um, uh, and, and to take another look at our, our other bonds that uh, from 2014, I think is our most recent one, to see um, if that's worthwhile uh, taking okay. a new look at and refinancing. So good idea. So I'll, I'll take that up. Thank, with you. Thank you. All right. There you go, Bill. <laughs> Two other items. Two other items from David here. Go ahead, David. All right, so Joyce, you probably know about this one is that we've had a resignation in the dispatchers. Yes, we did. As uh, um, said that we, the last day is the 20th. And correct, the correct. recommended a full-time replacement with our current uh, dispatcher, Barrett uh, Burkadal. Correct. So Richard, Richard Downey has passed in his resignation uh, as of last Friday. And uh, the part-time person, full-time person that's been part-time is actually going to step into the, his full-time position. So we, are, we have moved forward and uh, uh, thank Mr. Downey for his service to the town and uh, uh, wish him well. And uh, we will continue on and uh, have a new dispatcher in place as we speak right now. So do we need a motion to accept his resignation? 
yes, please, and the hiring of the full-time person to replace him. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept um, Rich Downey's resignation from dispatch and thank him for his years of service um, and accept the recommendation to appoint Bur well, B, they Barry call Burstall. her. Barry Burstall. They call her B. It's easier. <laughs> oh, B, okay. B and Burstall. Okay. That's his replacement. Yeah. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. My last item is a uh, contract between an agreement between. The Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and the Town of Hadley for the disbursement and use of emergency COVID-19 funding. We get $3,700 for the effort to control and combat the uh, the outbreak. If I could have a vote to uh, authorize the chair to sign that, that would be very helpful. Hang on a second. Repeat that again. Okay. So we received. Uh, we are in receipt of. $3,700 in emergency funding to uh, uh, combat COVID-19. This money is being passed to us by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Uh, and it's money that we got from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Public Health. So okay, they're giving so us money to help uh, fight uh, COVID-19. Not okay. a lot, but it's something. So that money will be allocated to the Board of Health? It's uh, allocated or to emergency management. Who who's it going to be allocated to? It's allocated to the town. Okay. Well, be that will be emergency management then. That would be to the select board that would sign this uh, agreement, and then we would work with Linda to set up a an account and a and a process for dispersing the money. Okay, I'll I'll make a motion to accept the thirty seven hundred dollars from the planning board, uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Board Commission, um, to be allocated as we see fit. Second. Second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 If there's nothing else, I have just a few things. <laughs> Sure. David, did you have anything else? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Jennifer. Um, first thing is we have two liquor licenses that are going to come up on April 1st. Um, I think that um, y'all are doing such a great job on Zoom that we can carry on with the public hearing through Zoom. Um, and I'm going to notify all of the abutters for one of the liquor licenses that bit, how they can join into the Zoom meeting in advance. So uh, the first one's gonna be the North Hadley Sugar Shack and they're applying for an on-premise wine and malt license. And that's gonna be in conjunction with their off-premise wine and malt license. This will be a new thing for Hadley, but it is happening elsewhere in the state. Um, so they've already advertised, they've already notified their abutters. So having to stop it at this time would be uh, at, the, at a cost to them and to the town. So I'd like to go ahead with it. I've talked to the ABCC and they said that based on our town's decisions, we are more than welcome to go ahead with it. <clears throat> and then the second one will be a change of manager and a change of corporate owners for Chipotle. Um, and I'd like y'all to take them both up next week, but I wanted to announce them now and make sure that everybody's okay and we can go ahead with it because we want to make sure our businesses can keep functioning during this time. And I know that North Hadley Sugar Shack is running out there and they're offering services right now to, to the community. Is there no reason why we can't vote on that tonight, Jen? Um, both of them have to be properly advertised, and we've already advertised North Hadley Sugar Shack for April 1st, so we do need okay. to stick on to the uh, advertisement date that was in the newspaper and send out to a Butters. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Fine. Me? Yeah, I don't think that'll be a problem. We can handle that. This seems okay. to be working out fine, so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the last thing I have is actually from our town collector. 
she wants to let everybody know that there is a drop box now installed on the front steps of town hall on the front porch by the door. Um, you can drop your uh, excise payments, real estate, water, sewer, everything right there. And it is a secure locked box and the collector is checking it every day. And um, thank you to Susan for getting that up for us. Um, how is the mail being picked up, Jen, for people that are sending their mail in or by their payments in by mail? Absolutely. Um, the post office is very kindly sending the mail or allowing Susan to pick up the mail every day. She is gathering the mail, sorting it and informing anybody who's working from home what they have. And um, we pick up as needed, if needed. Um, and I'm, I'm going to apologize, but Susan's just texted me and said, back porch. It is on the back porch. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize what the picture was on my phone. <laughs> um, the, the block box is on the back porch of Town Hall. But we're distributing the mail. Susan calls us, and if we need to pick it up, we can. Um, and we're, we're processing invoices and everything that way. So Town Hall is fully functional, even though lots of us are working remotely from home to follow the governor's orders. So people are actually coming into Town Hall, um, Susan or her assistant, and are they um, processing the checks and money that are coming into town hall? Yes, they are. Susan, Susan is coming in and processing the checks. That being said, town hall is not open to the public. You mail your check in or you put it in the drop box at the back of town hall. And, and Susan will process your payments. We are fully functioning. And people are still able to pay online. Absolutely, www.hadleyma.org. And online payments is one of the first selections right there. Thank you. Anything else, Jennifer, or is that everything you had there? Um, I'm gonna ask on April 1st for you to please make your decision on who you're gonna dedicate the annual report to. And Susan is texting me and she's telling me that payments are processed the same day that they are received. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> I have uh, something for Molly, and I have something. Uh, I have two things for Molly, and one thing for Christian. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling left out, David. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make up something for Joyce quickly, David. <laughs> okay. So, Christian, would you sign the N Star Easement Agreement? Yep. Molly, would you be so kind as when you're driving past Christian's house, could you pick up and sign the agreement and drop it in the mailbox in the back uh, of uh, Town Hall? I thought you I thought you were asking her to pick up a six pack of beer for you. It's <laughs> <laughs> a go. I'm here to go now. You just stop out front and I fill up your cup. <laughs> Drive by, right? Drive by, Christian? Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear. You gotta have a little humor in this. I, I'm yeah. sorry. I guess I have something for John as well. Something for John here. Is he still online? Yes, he's still there. Yeah. So John, uh, when I get the signed N star easement uh, from Molly and uh, uh, Christian, I'll run it down to DPW and we can have you sign it at that point and then we can get this thing registered. Yeah, that's fine. Or okay. just give me a give me a call and I can meet you at the back door or something. All right, sounds good. Is that everything for us, David? Probably not, but that's okay. all I can think right of. Right now, right now, okay. Is this uh, the zooming that we're doing tonight? Is it available to the public? The public is watching us right now on YouTube, and it will be broadcast on Hadley Media tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, that's good for them to know. Thank you very much. Yep. I appreciate uh, that. One, one other thing I wanted to mention too, what we were talking about drop boxes is there's a drop box uh, at the public safety complex if anybody wants to drop off any PPE they want to donate. So N95 masks, gloves, uh, any PPE that they feel they could donate to the town. Um, there is a drop box over there now too. That would be great. I know that uh, I can say, I know that Brian L. Weesey that owns a uh, uh, 
he does brickwork and things of that nature. He has donated his mask to Cooley Dickinson. And okay. so we have really appreciated that. And anybody else that is in that type of business that would like to donate either to our public safety um, personnel who um, certainly would have great benefit from them, we would appreciate that also. So, so thank you to anybody that would donate. And I just want to say, wash your hands. Don't touch your face. I mean, it's one thing that's out there that, you know, I'm having to wear a mask daily and not even being in contact with my coworkers. Um, we are taking this very seriously in the Valley. Um, I think we're very blessed at Cooley Dickinson right now. We only have two cases in the hospital that was reported to me at my huddle this morning. So, and I know other people are being tested, but um, please, it's very important. You have any signs or symptoms, please contact your primary care and do the proper thing. They will instruct you what to do. The best thing is to isolate yourself, stay home for 12 to 14 days. Uh, any further developments, any problems breathing, please call 911 at that point. Um, so please everybody be safe. And that's all I ask for all of my citizens of Hadley. Thank you. Any other announcements we have? All right, make a motion to adjourn then. Motion to adjourn. All right. Is there a second? Second. Yep. Okay. <laughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Everybody Aye. stay safe. Thank you, everybody. See you, See you next week. Yep. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs>